Yezero Crater, a location on Mars which will soon be the home for the Perseverance rover. But why would NASA select this crater to be the location of the landing site, and how might this region help Percy discover ancient life on Mars? Let's talk about that. Why Yezero Crater? This location offers many opportunities for Percy to try and reach its scientific objectives. And if you aren't aware, one of the biggest goals for the Perseverance rover is to understand if Mars could have once held life and to possibly search for evidence of ancient life on Mars. So how does Yezero Crater help Percy reach that goal? NASA has already denoted three major regions of interest. These essentially are areas where they would want the rover to explore once it gets there. The first of these regions of interest is called a delta deposit. Now, the word Yezero translates to lake from multiple Slavic languages. And the reason for this is because many scientists believe that Yezero crater was once an ancient lake. More specifically, the inlet that comes into this lake appears to be what could have once been a delta or a river delta essentially where all this water flows into the larger body of water and moves silts and clay and various sediments into this region. The second region of interest that NASA wants to study is the volcanic floor itself. The lake bed is formed from an igneous type rock or coming from lava or magma, meaning that if NASA can study how the crater itself was formed and the timeframes that we're talking about, they can start to understand more about if that played a role in the formation of life on Mars. And the third region of interest that Percy will want to study is the carbonate deposits. These carbonates will be incredibly useful for understanding an ancient Mars and whether or not it was habitable. It might also be able to hold the life itself. But what does that mean? In order to understand this, we need to think about a few things the river delta, the sedimentary layers, the volcanic activity, and the carbonates themselves. But why are these all so important? Why are the sedimentary rocks so valuable? Let's talk about stromatolites. But wait a minute, what is a stromatolite and how does that have to do with anything else we've been talking about this far? A stromatolite deposit is essentially a fossil for microbacteria. And I know what you might be thinking, how can you fossilize microbacteria? They're incredibly small. Well, the answer is colonies of bacteria can grow and accumulate over time to sizable matters in which we can see. Therefore, if a colony of bacteria is then infused or covered in silts and clay and under the right conditions, this will create a stromatolite deposit in the form of a sedimentary rock. Now here on Earth, there are stromatolites that have been aged all the way back to nearly three and a half billion years ago and is actually one of the best records in understanding the earliest forms of life on Earth. Meaning that, if we want to try and understand ancient life on Mars, shouldn't we be looking for the same things that we find here on Earth? So NASA is hopeful that Percy might be able to find evidence of ancient life on Mars, and potentially through the form of stromatolites. And this ties directly back into the carbonates. Some stromatolites that form here on Earth are actually formed in the presence of various types of carbonates. Therefore, if there are carbonate deposits in the similar region that there is this river delta basin, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for Percy to look for stromatolites. Now, we shouldn't get our hopes up too high. I doubt that Percy's just going to stumble upon a fossil on Mars. However, it will be interesting to see the formation of this river delta and how it is interacted with various regions on Mars, because this will be truly unique to understand what the planet was like in its history. Carbonates also provide many other geological uses. They are essentially a historic record, which could tell information about the history of Mars' atmosphere, as well as whether or not Yezero Crater was once filled with water, or maybe even twice, because current studies point to maybe Yezero Crater was filled with water at two different periods of time, during Mars' history. Also, the fact that the lake bed, or the base of Yezero Crater, is volcanic rock, this could be very important to the formation of the crater itself, and maybe if hot springs were available, which could aid in the formation of life at the point in time. 
So all these different aspects or regions of interest that NASA will be studying play a role in understanding the larger picture of the geological diversity of the crater as well as if Mars was once habitable or if this region could have once held life, which is incredibly fascinating. But there are also larger questions about the region as a whole. Looking at the delta and whether or not ice could have once formed on top of it, what caused it to flow and the different types of runoffs, and how does this compare with what we see here on Earth? To trying to get a better understanding of the overall presence and effects of these weathering conditions. The scientific outcomes are not the only things that have to be considered when choosing a landing site. One of the issues is traversability, or how well Percy will be able to navigate through the crater itself. Now, previous missions have ran into issues getting stuck on Mars, even leading to the end of the mission, for Spirit's case. However, it looks like Yezero Crater is pretty safe for Perseverance. The main reason is because in the northwestern region, where most of the regions of interest are, this is where Percy's going to be studying where really the only difficulties that NASA can see as of right now are in the southwestern region, where there's a large rock abundance, which could make it hard to navigate through. Meaning that, as long as the landing site is reached, it looks like it's gonna be a fairly effective approach in getting to where they want to go. But engineers are able to decide how efficient a region is by running many simulations and essentially creating images like this, by creating a pseudo Google Maps showing where exactly the Perseverance rover might be traveling to get to where they want to go. Some more facts about Yezero Crater is that it is 49 kilometers in diameter and lies on the edge of the much larger Isidus impact basin. Yezero Crater is also called a lacustrine deposit because of the fact that there's a buildup of a lot of clay and silt-like materials, which will eventually form sedimentary rock layers, which is what NASA is hoping to find. If Percy successfully lands in Yezero Crater, its closest robotic neighbor will be the Beagle 2 lander. This is a Mars lander that landed back in 2003. However, due to technical difficulties, it never communicated back with Earth after landing. So it'll be roughly a thousand kilometers away from Beagle 2. Yezero Crater is quite interesting because it is an ancient lake and we've already talked about this incoming flow or the river delta coming into the lake. But on the northeastern side, there's also an outlet flow that goes into that large impact basin. So it'll be really interesting to see if Percy can actually reach that outlet flow. However, due to the time constraints of the mission, I doubt that Percy will be able to make its way over there. But it's still interesting to see what this ancient lake might have looked like. Now this image shows the ellipse, or where Percy might be landing on Mars. Now even though this is fairly small, even in terms of the entire crater, it's still a large region, and depending on where the rover lands will impact its journey across Yezero Crater. So it'll be interesting to see what happens once the rover lands on Mars. So fingers crossed that everything goes successfully. If you want to learn more about the seven minutes of terror, and the landing sequence that the Perseverance rover will have to go through, you should check out this video. But with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to this channel. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.